Hey Jacko, in today's video I'll show you how to add a 2D and a 3D text to a scene in DaVinci Resolve and also how to position it nicely so it doesn't look off, like in this case. Now let's get digital. In one of my previous videos I've shown you the laser text effect, it looks cool, but positioning the text inside the edit page is a little bit tricky, so let's do it in the fusion page. I'll be using this video clip and I could add the text inside this clip but I can also use a fusion composition on top of it. So that is what I'll do. And I'll add the text at this point. So go to the media pool, right click, make a new fusion composition, give it a name, put it onto a timeline. Now let's find the ending of the composition and simply extend it to the playhead. Then select the fusion composition and go into the fusion page. Now this fusion composition is empty, and what I'll do is I'll type in media in, control space to open the select tools, or shift space, connect it. We won't see anything, so go to the media in and change the media source to background and make sure that the inspector is opened. Now we see the media beneath it, so this is what is beneath the fusion clip, that is why we can see it. If there was nothing beneath the fusion clip, this would be black. Now we can add the text in two ways, the 2D text, which is this one, and the 3D text. But first I'll show you with the 2D text. Type in some text. You have a couple of ways to position the text, like using this transform. You could also go to the text node, go to the transform here, but you're limited what you can do. And make sure that if you make a mistake like this, double click or simply type in zero. Let me just show what happens if you don't. If you make a change like this and then select the transfer from character to words or line and make additional adjustments, it can look cool, but it also looks off. And that's because the characters are not set to default values. So now this looks totally different than what you might expect. And if you want to move everything, you'll move it with lines. So we can position the text like so. We can go to the shear, adjust this to make it look a little bit better. In this transform, as you can see, you don't really have any additional options. So let's open the select tools, control space or shift space, type in transform, this is the one that you want, the bottom one. You have the yaw and the pitch option. But I first have to reset these values so that we can see what it actually looks like. So now we have the pitch. And then we have the yaw. So you could also adjust it in this way. If you don't want to have just a solid color, you can come to the merge and change the apply mode. This will depend on the color of the font and on the background of the video. This could be lighten. In this case, it won't do anything because the color is white. Overlay usually does the trick. Now, if I zoom in, you can see that we don't actually see the C beneath the letters. So what you can do is adjust the blend by a tiny bit if you want to see the C. In this case, I'll just use the overlay because it pops out. Now the second way how you can add the text is to use the 3D text, which you can find here. You'll want to use the camera, maybe some spotlights, and render node. So we have a 3D text, nothing is inside. So I have some text, I don't see it. I'll select the merge node and display it on the left side, and then select the camera, and you can see that the camera is basically on the same plane as the text, and that's why we don't see it. If I position the camera back, we start to see it. Now I can simply come to the text and size it down. And if I want to position it, I have a couple of ways of doing it. I could position the text by going to the transform and adjust the X, Y, and Z. I can also select the camera and adjust the translation here. So it's all up to you what you want to do. So I'll now simply position the text, I'll adjust the camera rotation, 
Maybe something like this. Now the difference between the 2D text and the 3D text. The 3D text has the extrusion option, which is visible by a tiny bit. What you have to do to have it really visible is go to the render node and enable the lighting. And if you don't have any lights, you'll just see black. So select the spotlight. And let's see where the text is. So we now see the text. It's this small piece. I'll change the rotation of the light. And we can change the color. And what you can also do is add as many lights as you want. So I'll simply copy the spotlight, paste it and connect it to the merge. Now I'll simply position it to this place and make the light from behind. This light will be white and I'll increase the intensity to 5. So you can now animate this light from the back. So you could animate the position. And you can see how the light moves over the letters. Now when it comes to the 3D text, let's just switch it around so that you can actually see how it looks like. This is the extrusion depth, the bevel depth. You first have to enable the width. And then you'll see what the bevel depth does. Now if you use these two options, I don't suggest you use the extrusion depth. You can just do it like this. And as you can see, this is too much. So make it smaller. And you should also adjust the spacing to make it a little bit more eligible. Now, if you want to do some masking, like I've done in the intro, so the text is not visible in the mountains, what I've done is I've used a polygon, not the best option, because it takes some time to mask out. So something like this. I can then connect it and invert the selection. Now, because I've made the polygon on frame zero, it's been keyframed already. Once I select all of the keyframes, or the ones that I want to move, I can simply position them into the location and make the adjustments. Now, depending on the shape, you may need to do all of the keyframes or just a bunch of them. So this is quite decent. You can also adjust the soft edge. So it will look a little bit smoother. But you don't really have to if the text will be moving fast. Like in this case, it will be visible in one second, so it doesn't really matter. Now what you can also do if you want is to adjust this text to be somewhere in the same position as it was once it appeared. So in this case, by this shape. I could simply use the merge node to do the positioning. So I can go to here, keyframe the center position, and then just eyeball the location. At this point, I have an issue with the polygon. I'll fix it in a bit. And if the camera is zooming in, you may also need to adjust the zoom or the size if you use the merge node. Now let me just fix the polygon. So it stops at this point. I'll go one frame forward, select all of the points that are inside the screen and position them down. So the text should be pretty much in place. I could now also animate the size and go to all of the keyframes that I've made for the positioning and adjust the size by a tiny bit. Now this is how the 2D text looks like. And let me show you how to mask out for the 3D text. It can be the same. You can use a polygon. Depending on the video, you can also use a bitmap to maybe mask out automatically so you don't have to do it manually. You will have to connect the media in to the bitmap. Select the channel. You can basically choose anything that will give you the best result. And what you want to get is black and whites. And where the blacks will be, that will not be visible. Or vice versa, you can always invert this. So maybe for the text, it could come up from all the way behind these mountains. 
So let me just position the text all the way here and also find the place where I want this animation to be. Now I can make a quick animation and then I'll simply apply the mask. So this is how the animation will look like. Now to apply the mask, simply use the bitmap to apply it to the render 3D. If I then enable the spotlight and maybe adjust the position of it, so it goes from this point to that point. Let's see how it looks like. Now, if you want to make the video clip a bit more interesting, you can speed it up. In this case, because I have two of them, I'll select both clips and make a new compound clip. Now at the beginning, it will be slow. Then at this point, I'll change the speed. Control R to open the real time curve. I'll add the speed point. And the speed point will be up to this point. Make a new speed point. And now, Simply click on this drop down menu and change the speed to what you want. Let's see, is this fast enough? No, 400. Let's see. This could be good. And then I can simply speed up again at the speed point, make it to 800, close it, and then fade it out at the end. If you want to add the fade to the text, you can also do that because at this point it just vanishes. So if you forgot to do that, simply right click, open in timeline, go to the fusion clip and simply adjust the fade. And then click on the timeline twice to go back to the original timeline. So let's see what we got. Looks good. We have the 2D text, we have the 3D text and it fades out. Now if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and until next time Jackals, keep it digital.